Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Brother Neil Frazier, we are here. Slight delay, but we are here. Not a problem at all. I'm glad to see you. Um, we had a little chit chat before and um, things are looking up in so many different ways, but I'm just glad to continue the positive spirit and, and just the work. You know, when, when a person who's a seamstress puts together a set of trousers or a dress, you know, they stitch, they mm -hmm. stitch, they push the needle in and come around. And every time they stitch, that garment comes alive and it gets stronger in its makeup. So every week that we speak and every week that you give a lecture and teach a lesson, it's a stitch in the subconscious minds of our people, which holds them together stronger, no matter what's going on in the world toward them and against them. So I want to thank you for holding us together, even when some people in the class don't really pay attention all the time, but they can come back and refer to it. And maybe, just maybe, others who hear can repeat what you said, if not just share what you're teaching. So you are very valuable to our community and you are more well-known than what you understand. But see, you're not going for that. You're doing the work and that's going to bring praise to you. So you have to accept it, brother, because you have decided to sacrifice the time on this earth for the betterment of our people. And I thank you for that. I'll never stop praising and thanking you for the work that you sacrificed to do. Welcome on in, brother. The floor is yours. Well, thank you, Brother Lance, uh, always for the kind words and uh, just, you know, listening to you speak right there confirms. I don't know how you do this, but every week when you um, open up, you confirm what the topic is because it, you're absolutely correct. Our, our thread that holds us together is a blueprint beyond what our physical manifestations are right here. So, yes. you know, I know in the ethereal world that we are brothers and I, I know that everything that yes. you do affects me and vice versa because of the energy that we generate together. And, yes. And, you know, while it is nice to be recognized individually, I know that without being connected to you and the other people that are connected to you, without that energy, then, you know, the battle would be much harder. But uh, we're soldiers. Um, you know, I, I often look at these people, these warmongers out here, um, and people get caught up into thinking, well, that is, yeah, on one level, they are soldiers. Right. But on, on the level we're fighting, if we didn't have generals like you, uh, you know, like they say, you cut off the head and the body will fall. So uh, wow. every chance I get to lift you up, brother, to your rightful place, I do that because I know, again, that this is destined for, you know, what our people need to continue to battle every day against forces that are have been you know used by individuals who have always tricked our people about love and religion yes so yes so beautifully uh, said oh absolutely um this uh i spent my weekend before we get into the presentation out of darkness mm -hmm. the spiritual dilemma mm -hmm. of sun people um, I spent my weekend, I did something I haven't done in like 10 years, maybe, maybe a little longer than that. I went back and I mm -hmm. listened to about three or four black preachers. Um, mm -hmm. And I listened to the modern day ones. Then I went back, you know, like about 25, 30 years. Then I went back a little further, 40 years to my dad in those times. And then I did another interesting thing. I went back to the time of over a hundred years ago. And uh, wow. So I listened to <laughs> five black preachers, five white preachers. And I also listened to um, some preachers who, you know, also um, emulate 
this syst- religious system that have been beating right. people from, you know, Asia, India, you know, and places like that. It is truly amazing, brother. It is truly amazing how these narrative stories have put our people in a position where we cannot even see the real creator creator spirit of the universe. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we're going to talk about that today. Uh, but, oh man, come FM. on. But, uh, the people that have, I, I'm sorry, Lance, Thank I hit you. something on my. This yeah, no problem. Okay, here. But the people have, who have put us in this position, they actually know the things that we're going to discuss today. Um, not only do they know it, they've seen it, and they they know, unlike us, who th- the warfare that they're in, who is against, why it's against them, and, and right. weapons need to be used in order to do that. So um, the amazing thing about these creatures that I listen to, so I, I, I went back a little further. Let's start with the um, ones that were back in the 1800s. I found out some fascinating stuff. Of course, we know, know our people, um, this religion was forced on our people. A lot of our people don't want to look at this. But um, I found out that uh, there were ministers, black ministers that were chosen who were slaves that under threat of death, they had to quote certain scriptures. This is something, uh, you know, I had heard about this, but I had never really directly looked at it. Literally, un- under the threat of death by a gun. Wow. Several scriptures that they had to quote to our people or they could face death. And the amazing thing about that is these are the exact same scriptures that these black preachers, even up to today, always use. It's the exact same, the white preachers. Amazing. All of the ones I looked at use these same seven to eight scriptures that our people are, are hooked on. And uh, I started I started really kind of understanding and comprehending now the deliberate spiritual and psychological attack as well as the physical attack on our people. And so <clears throat> it was just interesting. I, it it kind of opened my eyes again to um, how there isn't a deliberate uh, warfare against our people that our people don't see or don't want to see, but it's con- it's so ingrained in our culture. And, and then I started looking through YouTube at some of the black Christian um, people that are out here perpetrating the same thing. It, it just blew my mind how this same message uh, that they beat into our people. And the final thing I'm gonna say about this is that uh, our people were baptized in different rivers. They couldn't even be baptized in the same rivers as the people who on pain of death threatened them to regurgitate these scriptures. It it, it was just (laughs) amazing. But as always, you know, we look to nature to, define our reality, not the narratives that have been written by people who um, not only buried our history, but they also buried the, the history of the elements that we are connected with um, in the universe and in nature here on the planet. We're going to talk about that. So we're going to talk about 11 areas today out of darkness the spiritual dilemma of sun people or black people. So I know our people have this ongoing battle over descriptive terms. So in order <laughs> to get us out of this, we're just going to refer to ourselves. We're still going to refer to the description of black people. But right. today, so people can really focus on the message, we're going to call ourselves what we know, 
we are in nature. That is children of the sun or sun people, right? Beautiful. So the first area we're going to look at is the... Uh, I'm going to mute my mic. I'm right here okay. with you. I'm going to mute my mic. Okay. Okay, brother Lance. All right. Uh, the first area we're going to look at is the solar versus lunar um, existence or the the sun versus the moon existence um we know we live in a in a world that's more um even though we live by the gregarian calendar which is supposed to be a solar calendar we know that we are more affected by a magnetic influence okay and and this is one of the things that this is one of the reasons why things are um, vibrationally turned up on you or turned down for different effects. We're gonna talk about that as well. Um, we're gonna talk about darkness and light, um, the different things that we have incorrectly been taught in order to keep us disconnected from our primary source, which is uh, sun energy. Uh, we're going to discuss spirituality versus religion. We're also going to discuss the three realms of existence and experiences, which is uh, spirit, mind, and body. We're going to talk about out of darkness and the dark womb the, and water, because we know that water has a memory, our genetic memory bank, okay, which is really our spiritual experience, because you know, you come out of a dark womb and you emerge into a world of light or so-called light. But this is your eternal spirit. We're going to talk about the God frequency, 963 hertz, which uh, activates your healing and spiritual uh, capacities, with the, the real essence of spirituality. And which again, um, one of the ways in which you were cut off from this is sending you to a building, okay, where your pineal gland is shut off from the sun, as opposed to how you're supposed to worship outside, where you're exposed to the power of the sun, and then, you know, all of the energy that is connected to that, you will automatically be able to manifest. Um, we're going to talk about the physical aspect of our existence with spirituality, which is uh, comes from, we, we learn the organic lessons that comes from the bowels of the uh, earth, the dark and fertile soil. Uh, we, we're going to look at the organic and inorganic nature of our separation from source energy. And we're gonna look at natural versus artificial. Um, one, of, one of the main things that is gonna be a part of what we talk about is that you will know them by their fruits, okay? And finally, we're gonna talk about the etheric heart, uh, the etheric body, okay, and the etheric realm. So I want to start out by saying after, as I was talking about, I went back all the way back to where this in, uh, religious indoctrination started for our people, is that God is a big one. According to what has been given to our people and the narratives, well, let me, let me break that down. They're just like we take America, for instance. We have hundreds of laws on the books. Maybe a third of them get enforced. So you have the letter of the law, and then you have the spirit of the law. And so this is where the spiritual dilemma of our people come, some people come in at. We have been taught the letter of the law and falsely given a type of spirit of the law which does not manifest itself in the fruits 
of these laws and narratives that you live by. We're going to talk about that today. But yeah, God is a bigot. The God that our people serve is a bigot. I went back to the beginnings again and researched how and what our people were taught. And if it wasn't for your true spirit that is connected to all things in nature and the universe, then we definitely would not have come out of that era. Okay, there is no question about it. The reason why we were able to come out of that era is because regardless to what we regurgitated, our spirit mind was still connected to source energy or the collective consciousness. Um, but in the narrated language, okay, and vocabulary of the lunar or magnetic world in which you're influenced by, law of attraction mainly, our people are attracted to a lot of different things. That is because, again, of this sun energy that you have that's being deliberately directed into other areas, okay, by narratives. But in this vocabulary of, of this narrative language, darkness has a negative connotation, okay? Um, and we know that light has a positive connotation. But the way that the universe is set up and operates, okay, the real creator and creatrix of the universe, okay, not a man or a woman that writes narratives, okay, to explain your spiritual connection with all things in nature, but the real creator, creative spirit, teaches us that light emerges from darkness. This is the true existence of sun people. And this is the natural manifestations that happen as a result or when you connect to your uh, source energy. Okay. Now, I want to mention something here that's very important. The narratives that you are living by now, okay, the, the first three of our uh, great historians and scholars, uh, Professor James Small, uh, Professor Kaba Kamene, and also uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, have proven and shown us, and many more people have proven this, that the first show of European intelligentsia uh, was the Iliad and the Odyssey in 1250 BC by Homer, okay? So the reason why I'm bringing that up is because it has to be some kind of sorcery, uh, brother. There's just no other explanation for this. These are things that were written, okay, <laughs> beginning in 1250 BC that uh, came at least 40,000 years after what your son, people, ancestors put in the world. So that's like me knowing who my father is and my grandfather and saying, oh no, those are not my, that's not my grandfather and my father. The, this man, these two men over here are my grandfathers and grand and father. Why? It's because 10 years ago, they wrote down my history, told me where I was from, who my people are, uh, what we did, uh, what we're known for. I said, oh, okay. So then I, re I reject the truth. And then I say, okay, what you're saying must be true since you know all of this history. Now, I never ask you where you got this from. 
But the point I want to make here is that uh, half of human history, okay, had already been gone prior to 1250 BC. Okay, let me say that again, in case you didn't hear. Half of human history had already been lived by some people prior to 1250 BC. And see, this is the spiritual dilemma that our people have. Not wanting to accept that we are the primordial people on the planet, that all spiritual knowledge came from our people in the motherland and here in Tur on Turtle Island. Okay. So there's been a very deliberate effort to not only psycholog psychologically make you see darkness as something bad, but it's also been a deliberate act to block. Because when you look like we're going to look at today, throughout nature, okay, and the universe, you see this principle that all things that affect the human existence on this planet came out of darkness first. Okay, we're going to show that today. Um, the icebox theology, as I said, did not manifest before 1250 BC. Okay. And half of human history had already been lived before anybody knew anything about what you know as Europeans today who have rewritten history. Okay, so let's look at uh, spirituality versus religion. They're, they are actually polar opposites, okay? They are two separate uh, existences, okay? So when someone uses the word spiritual or spirituality with the word religion, that's a misnomer whether you want to believe that or not, okay? So let's talk about why that is. Um, in the etheric realm, or the spiritual realm, it is rooted in natural universal laws and principles. Let me read that again. That in the etheric realm, or the spiritual realm, okay, that our spirituality is rooted in natural, universal laws and principles, okay, uh, re as opposed to its polar opposite that you have been indoctrinated with, okay, for this specific reason, religion is rooted in plagiarized verbal expressions, okay, which we know that only 77% of real communication is verbal. 93% of real communication is nonverbal. There's a reason for that. But I want to, I want to say this again, so, so we'll get this in our head as we move forward. And then we're going to look at, at how nature teaches us that, that this is the evidential proof of this statement that light in the universe and in nature emerges from darkness. So before anything else was, there was you. There was darkness, this dark energy matter that exists in the etheric world, which we are a part of, okay? Um, so we know that uh, religion is rooted in plagiarized verbal expressions, okay, less than 1,800 years ago or 2,000 years ago, whichever one you want to accept. But this is one of the reasons, and I hear people talk about this, and, and 
they have issues with actually understanding and comprehending this. But this, per, this reason is why you can violate spiritual laws and at the same time be a scripture quoting, Bible toting, church going person like the majority of our people. And, and now the people they're bringing from these other countries, which they deliberately indoctrinated like they did you. So, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not talking down to my people because I was indoctrinated in the same thing. Probably more so than the average person on here listening to me, okay? But at the same time, the reason why I, I wanna make this very plain now is because I want you to think about something because black folks are at a crossroads right now, okay? We're at a serious crossroads. But I want you to think about something. What if we never move beyond the horse and buggy stage? What if the spark plug, by the way, was invented by a black man? You can Google it. Uh, what if we never introduced the spark plug to put inside an engine to make a car go, okay? What if that never happened? So why is it that you, and, and let's look at this lesson in nature. I always like to use this because um, this is so simple. A child could understand it and comprehend it. That a caterpillar has to have a metamorphosis to become a butterfly or it will remain a caterpillar till the day it dies. That is a fact in nature that nobody can change. Okay, so you can get the best preacher in the world to, to preach to you and quote scriptures, um, but that fact will never change. So what makes you think that you're not supposed to evolve from your lower consciousness to your higher consciousness? In fact, this is the concept behind KRST and the Medu Nature that when the invaders came upon our lands, they first saw. This is where they get this from. This um, uh, why they say that Christ is the anointed one, because the first thing that they said, saw was this concept, KRST, okay, that has been plagiarized into what you believe today. Okay, this is a fact. And in the book and stones, we know this already. So from a spiritual perspective, let's begin with that. <coughs> per Im Haru, okay, or the coming forth by day that your people, sun people originated, that all of what you know today in religion was copied from, which they call the Book of the Dead because these people had no respect for our sacred ancestrals, ancestral um, knowledge and wisdom. They literally went in and took these scrolls out of the sarcophagus of our, our physically dead uh, ancestors. This is why they call it the Book of the Dead. Okay, but Per M. Haru was the original name of this knowledge that you, that has been passed down, okay, through the Hebrews, okay, and the Greeks, and then uh, the Latin, and then these Romanticized languages that, you know, and then English. So when you look at the etymology of and the linguistic history of these concepts, then you can clearly see where it originated from. Hell, I can write a narrative of anything right now, but does that make it so? The one thing about religion and narratives or what you call scripts is that, and they weren't even written during the time that this supposedly took place. That's the other thing. Okay, so when we look at the spirit mind, we look at 
out of darkness, the universal collective consciousness, the mind, okay, which they want to call dark matter energy. <laughs> but these are your ancestors. These are the sun people that are still active. We're going to look at that right now. So the first thing we're going to talk about, okay, is we're going to talk about uh, the brightest objects in the universe, which is a quasar. That's you. The most impressive thing about a quasar is that it is powered by a super massive black hole. Okay, let me say that again. You know, nature is our greatest teacher. And when we look to nature for answers instead of narrative writers that you have accepted as gospel truth for everything, then you clearly see the difference between the creatrix creator spirit, okay, and these um, God and goddess that you um, have let interpreted, wrongly interpreted everything to you because it sounds good. But a quasar, okay, who you are, okay, or who some people are, emerges from a super massive black hole, okay? The blazing center of active galaxies, 12 billion light years away, emitting a thousand times more light, okay, than our own Milky Way. So let me say, say that again in case you didn't get that, okay. This quasar that comes out of this supermassive black or dark hole, okay, uh, it's considered an active galaxy, okay? And it emits more light than our own Milky Way. An active galaxy is one in which a central supermassive black hole is so great that all the material can't enter the black hole at the same time, so it forms a spiral disk that's so massive it cannot even be, the diameters of it can't be measured. That's you. See, you have let people um, basically take away your real power, who you are, rather than look into your real creatrix, creator spirit. You refuse to do that. And so I believe, you know, I hear people saying, and I agree, stop saying our people are cursed, okay? That is not the case. What, what, what it is is because you have walked away from natural laws, then there, there is natural karma that comes as a result of violating natural universal laws and principles. When you're quoting scriptures, but the fruits of your manifestation is the total opposite and diametrically opposed to true nature that's all in the universe and in, plant, in the plant kingdom, animal, and everything that you refuse to look at, then there is a natural karma that comes as a result of this. And this is what has happened to our people as guardians of the universe. This is, this is what has happened to our people. This is what I really believe. And when you look at symbols, the uh, sacred uh, geometry shapes in the universe, um, you look at the frequencies of the universe, the spirit of Ohm or 432 Hertz, which is the vibration of nature that we are disconnected from okay, mainly through this music you listen to, you, you see that in nature, there is nothing involving um, the verbalization of nature or, or the narratives, as I like to say, that you live by. Okay, the real power in the universe and in nature and spirituality has nothing to do with religion at all. And, okay? Because the universe operates, you take cymatics, 
okay, which semantics basically is the study of wave phenomena. Your wave, our ancestors' waves that are in sp a spherical disk around those super ma massive holes, okay? And guess what's birthed out of it? The brightest object in the universe, okay? But this wave phenomena, um, especially sounds and their visual representation. This is what real spirituality is. It has nothing to do with no verbalized narratives that you quote every day. So you guys can stop sending me scriptures Honestly, I know the Bible backwards. I, I don't need um, scriptures to define my existence. Our people have to move beyond the horse and buggy stage now into the spark plug age. And, and you know, real spirituality, okay, is here in the universe and in nature for us to see. Now, what is the reason for this? Okay. The, the, the reason for this is because once you know who you are, there, there are no forces on uh, even a nuclear blast cannot destroy who you are. Okay. So there is a lot that has been invested in keeping you dumbed down. Okay. And, and keeping you, and more importantly, <laughs> They don't care about us, man. They got the majority of black people are trapped already in their own mind. Okay. They're after our children. Okay. And so the way I look at it, uh, you have to take me out first before I stop telling our children the truth. That's just the way it is. Um, and I can't speak for other black, I can speak for people like Lance and other people I know and people in the chat room. Um, but uh, I can't speak for the majority of our people anymore. I just know that we're in a battle to protect our and save our children. And uh, this is the ultimate battle that we have right now. Okay. So let's go to out of darkness when we talk about the dark womb. But what is the dark womb in? Water. This is our genetic memory bank. This is you connected to the collective consciousness. This is you connected to that quasar coming out of that black hole. This is you, some people. But you have been put into a lunar existence. Okay. There was a time where people that, and you know, they changed these names and say, that's why I don't get caught up into that. But so-called the Pelagians, Pelagians, uh, and all of these people, when you go back, uh, you know, past uh, 5,500 years, 5,000 years, you're talking about black people, okay? I don't care what kind of spin they put on it. So these Pelagians, um, they, in their writings, they write about a time before the moon existed, okay? So... You got to understand and comprehend that um, in, in order for you to move now and reclaim your rightful place back on the planet, you're going to have to turn away from this 500-year indoctrination of our people, okay, back to your real selves. I don't know what it's going to take for you to do that. Um, I do know what it's going to take for you to do, but, you know, and then the thing that gets me is, you know, these people that say, well, you love pleasures more, the pleasures of men more than the word of God or whatever. What are you talking about? Okay. What word of God are you referring to? Because the real word of God is in the universe and in nature. And we're going to show you why that is. Okay. But out of darkness, the dark womb, the water, the eternal spirit, your genetic memory, what happens? When that water bursts, when a woman's water bursts, right, then you emerge out of darkness into life. You see this principle? But because you have been taught um, 
the wrong way, we don't see these um, these divine laws and these principles that exist, that our people in antiquity lived by and knew this. Okay. And the reason why it doesn't exist is because the misogynistic white male dominated religious narratives that you live by, okay, um, have effectively eliminated the creatrix spirit. But you, if you know anything about anything, you know that you cannot have uh, the male energy without the feminine energy. You cannot have magnetic without electro. Okay. These principles live throughout our existence. Okay. Now, let's look at out of darkness, the germinator. Okay, the germinator is that which germinates and connects all of the elements, such as vitamin D from the sun, rain, fertile soil, and the bowels of the earth where roots can connect. These principles will never change. They've been here before us and they'll be here long after we're gone. So you might as well teach the truth, okay? But in the bowels of the earth, the dark earth, this germination takes place. These roots take hold. And this big, pretty green tree emerges. But what happens in the artificial world or the inorganic world is that, um, the physical manifestations that you have been given is GMOs, okay? And the, uh, the GMO of your spiritual existence is religion, okay? Now let's look at the fruits and the manifestations of this, okay? And remember, we're a black think tank, so we're focusing on the issues of, our, of black people and our young black people in particular. Okay, so whoever else, whatever um, your cultural orientation is fine. Okay, but we're talking about black folks here. And we're talking about what we're dealing with, what is constantly being thrown at us and how we must now pull the veil off and look at the reality of what we're dealing with. So you say, in your scriptures, you will know them by their fruits. Okay, that's fair enough. What fruits are you referring to? Because all the fruits we get is artificial or GMOs or, or narratives or scripts. That's what we get. That's what we've always gotten. And that's what we'll continue to get until we demand to get something different. Okay. Now let's look at this manifestation. Now I'm going to talk about our young people, because like I said, that's who they're after. That's who they're planning the continual spiritual, psychological, and physical enslavement of our people. All right, based on the, um, the statistics within the last five years. Okay. Oh, and the other thing they're doing is they're infeminizing our men okay, to further dilute the creatrix energy. That's why they're doing it too as well. The other reason is, as you as the original man, there is a hatred of your natural masculinity, your virility. Because when you think about it, how can people who have 99% of the world's resources still try and want to hold you down when you are the reason for them. And this is crazy when our, if our people just stop and think. When our women, okay, cooked, nursed, helped take care of the house, did all these things, okay? How could you deny? Well, in a lot of ways, because white males know this, our women, um, get certain advantages, okay, which they deserve. I don't have an issue with that, okay. But in a misogynistic society, 
in a male-driven society, when you hold the males of a certain culture down and elevate the female, then you are you know that you are fighting directly against divine laws. And see, this is what angers me about our people. These people are deliberately defying divine laws and principles. They're spitting in your face. And then you get somebody that goes on TV that refuse to deal with the main problem facing American citizens in all of our major cities, in our rural cities, I guess, too, because I heard so a couple of white people complaining about it. But yet you can talk about things about the uh, employment and uh, improvement and employment. This is bull crap, okay? The main problem facing America today and facing black people today, okay, is that we have, uh, well, not we, that you have brought legally stop I don't say illegal okay that you have legally brought into this country over seven million people but yet someone can get on TV during politics time okay and and give all of these so-called positive uh, things that have been done which are really lies and ignore the primary issue that is going to destroy the fiber of people living in America. That is, that is cr the craziest thing that I have ever seen. So don't come trying to tell me, okay, when you have a democratic type of situation where you have unleashed these, uh, counterfeit spirits into uh, the American society, or either you're being controlled by them, and people can get on TV and act as if, you know what? I'm mad at black folks, man. I am. Because this, this bamboozle bullshit, I'm sick of this, man. They can get on here and say, oh, can, when I go out here today, I guarantee you, the majority of black feet, folks I see, okay, are living in abject hell. Now, I don't know about some heaven and hell that you've been taught about, but I see hell every time I go out here. I don't never see no heaven for our people. So people can get on TV and say all these wonderful sounding things. That, that doesn't change anything. When we know, and I was talking about this earlier, about the difference between these scripts that you believe in, the law of it and the actual spirit of it, okay? You can ask the uh, Aboriginal people about laws or, or, or agreements or whatever you want to call them. These, they're, unless you have the true spirit of the creator creatrix and the love for your fellow man and woman, okay, like you pretend to, then you are spitting on the laws that have been set here by something greater than you that you want to claim. Okay, let's continue to look at this. All right, <clears throat> let's look at, you said you know them by their fruits, correct? Now let's look at, um, our black children, the black youth, and the manifestation of what the religion that our people live by, the hypocrisy that our kids or children have seen, and why they're rebelling against everything. Thir uh, black people, or sun people, are 13% of the U.S. population, yet is responsible for 60% of the violent crime in this country. Now, I don't want nobody coming to me, yo, white people kill white people too, and all do. No, we're not talking about that. Okay, it's time to move beyond that. We're talking about what black folks are doing. Okay, so let's stop that. 
because because you'll be right in these churches on Wednesday night at so-called Bible study and never mention what we're going to do about our youth. Okay, what are we going to what are we going to do about it? Okay, and I don't want nobody sending me no more scriptures. I'm done with that. Uh, 13% of the U.S. population is, is responsible for 60% of the violent crime. And get this, okay, 50% of U.S. murders. Now, I don't want nobody emailing me to my white people kill white people and all these all this other crazy nonsense. I'm talking about black folk. Our children are killing each other. 50% of the murders within the last five years. Okay, now this mess has got to stop. There is no, first of all, this is the manifestation of the religion that you follow, that you're indoctrinated with. Because you said it right there in your own script, you will know them by their fruits. Isn't that something that you quote all the time? What fruits are you referring to? Because the fruits that I see is right here, what I just read you. And it don't just come from one source. I don't just use one source. I use several sources before I put any kind of information on Lance's show. Okay. So the time for playing games is over. That's over with. Because these people are going to bury you. And, well, they already done that. They just haven't had the funeral. But it's our children now that we have to focus on. Because you think things are bad for us now. What do you think they're plotting against them while they're quoting and preaching uh, these scriptures to you? Okay, right. The next time somebody send me a scripture, send to me something that where this has helped one of our young people. Do that. Okay. Now, let's talk about real spirituality, who our people really are, and why we have this big spiritual dilemma. And the dilemma is, how can a people who give their whole heart, spirit, and everything to a religion still have these type of manifestation? How is that? That is against divine law and principle, whether you know it or not. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at <coughs> excuse me, the etheric heart. Let's look at that. Okay. And, and what we're talking about is your is your astral metaphysical existence or your true spirituality the etheric heart okay the heart that is the spiritual blueprint if behind who you are because you are a spirit having a human experience okay not the other way around so what happened to some people's etheric heart well from your primal existence, including your astral experiences or collective consciousness, all human activity is connected with the etheric heart. Now, I know some people like to call, what is the terminology that they use? Uh, I can't think of it right now. Okay. But uh, all human activity is connected with the etheric heart. And the etheric heart is the one organ that was formed out of the images of the cosmos, okay? This is you, not some religious narrative that's been written down from you to you that was plagiarized, okay, and literally stolen from your dead ancestors or the physically dead ancestors out of their tombs. We're talking about the real creator, creative spirit. Your, your etheric heart as sun people, okay, your astral connection and experiences and from your primal existence here on the planet, okay, all human activity is connected to this etheric heart. This is who you are. And this is why when black folks allow this wickedness in their heart, these things that you have been taught, I don't care how many scripts you quote, 
This is the manifestation of what you've been taught. This petty jealousy, this enviousness of each other. All of this has nothing to do with your etheric heart. When people tell you that you have to give your heart to a religion, they're not talking about the etheric heart because the etheric heart already exists and doesn't have to be given to anything, okay? The etheric heart or real spirituality is the one organ, okay, that was formed like the quasar, out of the images of the cosmos. That's you. That's who you really are. But somehow you don't want to take that back because you're afraid that once you stop, stop worshiping these people who have a God complex, then things will turn on you. Well, I'm here to tell you it always has and it always will be. So you might as well stop worshiping them in their false gods and giving them all your damn money. That is the number one problem. You know what's really sick about this? You're actually paying for your own oppression and demise to continue. When you really think about it, thank you, Creatrix. When you really think about that, you are, you are financing your own oppression and demise. Now that is really sick. Because every time you go to these people who have sold their souls to these 5013C people, uh, and they go and they give them back your hard-earned money, all right, then you are the one that's worshiping their gods through these people you worship every Sunday, okay? Now, I don't care. They can get mad at me all they want. I don't care. Okay, but the etheric heart, that's you. That's real spirituality, your heart. So you need to get all that wickedness out your heart towards each other. This is why our kids are killing each other like this. Nobody else can stop this. Where did they learn this wickedness, okay, and this hatred of each other from? Where did this come from? But yet, black folks are the most spiritual people. I mean, I'm sorry, not spiritual. Well, they are the most spiritual too, but the most religious people in the world. Okay. And well, we're running neck and neck with the Latinos from these um, foreign, from these other countries. Okay. Uh, but the primary thing is this imbalance that has been created because they have separated the feminine energy from our energy. I'm talking about the real feminine energy. I ain't talking about this crap they put on TV and these people twerking and doing that. That ain't no real feminine energy. That is that is the, these counterfeit spirits that has created an avatar for you to live in. Okay, that has nothing to do with no real spirit and who the, the real feminine energy is. Why? And, and why have they attacked sun people and want to even block the sun? Because they've changed this principle on you. The earth revolves around the sun. That's real spirituality. It revolves around you. You're your own universe. But now you have been told that all things evolve around the moon, around lunar, or influence. You being able to influence people, you be able to get attention. This has nothing to do with sun energy because sun energy doesn't need attention. It is its own attention. It attracts its own, okay? This is why people need you to keep going with the buffoonery, with the coonery, with all this uh, crazy, stupid stuff. This is why they need that from you. Because if you ever realize who you were and broke away from this 90 degree sorcery that you have been under for 500 years, you see something different. I guarantee you, you see something different. Because now you're activating the laws of the universe here on the planet. Okay. 
Um, now here's the dilemma. Let's go back to that. Okay. The etheric realm or, or where our spirit dwells. Okay. You are separate. The etheric realm is separated from the physical plane. Okay. Let me say that again. The etheric realm or the blueprint of our spirituality that I just talked to you about everywhere in the universe and on the planet, out of the bowels of the earth, you get darkness, light coming out of darkness. Okay, uh, light being life, okay, on manif manifestation. Out of, uh, and then you have, uh, out of the massive, supermassive uh, black holes, you have the quasar, okay, coming out, okay? And then from the dark moon, okay, you have the manifestation of light, okay? You, you manifest into the world. Sorry about that. You manifest into the world, okay? coming out of the dark primordial waters. So now we're going to see why you have this big spiritual dilemma. Because your spirit, that's why black people can't be broken. Your spirit actually resides in this etheric realm, okay? And it is separated from the physical plane. That's why no matter what people do to you, that's why everything they've done to, to us has failed. They cannot destroy that. They can separate, but they can't destroy. Ultimately, they don't have that power just to bluff you. But the ethereal source of what is referred to as supernatural, because certainly it's not supernatural to us, just like when they first encountered the Dogon, it was like, this is supernatural. No, it's not. It's natural for us. The only reason it's supernatural is if you can't connect to it. Okay? So I want to bring up an important point about this as well, but I'm going to give the example of what I'm talking about. We're talking about like the ocean and the sky. Okay? It's separated. The ocean and the sky is separated. However, great turbulence happens when they merge or interact. So when you, your etheric spirit and mind and your etheric body, which we're going to talk about the etheric body as well, when they merge with this physical manifestation or this religion that you follow, there's turbulence. That's why, you know, because they're not supposed to. As a sun being with open pineal gland, you're not supposed to do, uh, merge with that. Okay, but when you do, and when you interact with that, that is why so much effort is put into keeping you in a 90 degree way of seeing the world and thinking. Okay, that's why so much effort is put into the garbage, the music that you listen to. And remember, okay, we talked about, um, well, well, let me go back to that before I make this point what they call the God frequency, 963 hertz. That is where healing and spiritual effects come into play. Okay. But what religion does, and I believe that this was deliberately planned and done at a higher level than just what you function on. What religion has done is it's cut your ability to self-heal. This is why there's so much hatred amongst our own people, self-hatred. And it's also stopped you from experiencing the spiritual effects of, of the uh, God frequency, the 963 hertz, which you are naturally connected to. We just talked about it. Okay. But one of the fascinating things that I discovered, and I was looking at how was this done? Taking you to every time you go into that building, you're shut off from the sun. 
Every time you go in those buildings to worship those false gods and idols and then give money on their altars, you are shut off from, this is why our griots used to teach us under the tree. This is why our people understood and comprehended these uh, divine principles, okay? Because once you go into what you call houses of worships, okay, or whatever you call them, temples or whatever, then you automatically cut yourself off from source energy. That's what I wanted to say. And that was deliberately done. Now, um, your spirit is separated from the physical plane religion, okay? And, and, and this is the primary reason for so much turbulence. So <clears throat> with that said, the, the main thing moving forward with our people that we have to take a serious look at now is why, why have we continued to give our power over to other people? Why? Why do we continue to do this? I know the answer is fear. That's what they threaten you with every day. They threaten me with it. <coughs> we know how to survive. Um, you know, it's nothing wrong with having nice things. But do you have to kill your own brothers and sisters to have it? That's not, this is the manifestation and the fruits of all these centuries of false indoctrination. Okay, so as I, as I close, okay, I, I did want to touch one thing before I close. I wanted to talk about the etheric body or your spiritual body. The life force. Okay, all, and this force is present throughout nature in the plant kingdom. <laughs> uh, okay, your, your etheric body or your spirit body, okay, is what maintains the physical body that you live in, this avatar you live in. This is why all of this garbage is uploaded to you because your spirit and why you eat GMOs and your diet is so important. Because what you're eating is also uh, a uh, weapon against your spirit body. Okay. And this also is deliberately done. Okay. But the, your spirit body, which is also present in the plant, plant kingdom, because the same thing happens to them when they die, they go back to the earth. Okay. But this, this life force that's in your uh, etheric or spiritual body maintains the physical body, okay? It maintains this form until death or physical death, okay? And, and at that time, then th that spiritual or etheric body separates from your physical body, and then the physical body reverts back to its natural uh, disintegration or decomposition or whatever you want to call it. So you see, all of these principles are all around us in nature. But because someone was able to take 7% of communication and expression and trap you with that, then our people and our children mainly continue to pay a heavy price. And if we don't do something, uh, it's going to be worse than we could ever imagine. And with that, I'll close, Brother Lance. I hope you're still around. Um, but, uh, you know, this is, this is a, a very troubling time for our people. Okay. And, and it's troubling simply because, um, well, now that we're faced to look at politics a different way, which is a good thing, where now we can see that um, the, the people who have been pretending to care about your plight, okay, for all these decades and have had you locked in, really don't, okay? And, okay, what? So, okay, so you made, you made a mistake in judgment. That's fine. 
It's really not a mistake in judgment. All it is is you have to experience things to grow. And no growth takes place. This is why academic training is great, okay? It's great. I'm not going to say anything again. But experiential knowledge is greater. I'll take a person with experiential knowledge over academic training any day, okay? Because experience is the best teacher in life. And that's why you can never leave anything or anyone if you never walked in those shoes. You, you can never effectively uplift anybody, any people, or anything if you yourself have not gone through and experienced what it is that you're trying to teach or what it is you're trying to put forward. Okay, and, and this is the dilemma that our, our people find themselves in. Um, uh, one, of, one of the things that I uh, recently did was talking to uh, a couple of young people about how they feel about this migrant crisis situation that's facing the country. You'd be surprised. Our young people, they know what's going on. They know exactly what's going on, okay? And, um, you know, although they weren't too happy about it, they the, the question they seem to have is, well, what does that mean for black people? What does that, when you get down to, in our society, everything is based on fiat. When you get down to the nuts and bolts of it, because a lot of them already know they can't get jobs. They can't get summer jobs like they used to. They, you, you know, see now, and this is too, one, they don't have places, like I've said before, like the YMCA's, the boys and girls clubs, the places, uh, facilities we used to have in our communities. Um, it used to be a place where we could go to after school to do things. Okay, we, we didn't have to just roam out in the street because um, I don't mind, as they say, is the devil's workshop. I hope you're around, Brother Lance. So um, what I'm going to do, uh, I have a, a prior commitment. To, uh, I don't want to just uh, leave the show. Brother Lance is not around. But uh, we, we got started a little later than normal for different reasons. And, uh, you know, oh, see, I tricked myself. I actually did set that time back. Okay. See, the clock moving forward. Um, so let's go back to um, the beginning when, when we, we first started talking about um, how our people find themselves in this spiritual dilemma. Um, one of the, the things that I readily um, see and recognize is the dogmatism that's involved with how we view um, what we have been taught spirituality. Okay, but, but really it's just religion. Um, the dogmatism that's involved with that is a, a serious issue because it doesn't allow our people to have open and honest discussions about the spirit of the law or the letter of the law, um, how you like to refer to it as. This is, this is why you have different people that have different emotional um, attachments to different things. Because there is so, um, one of the things that uh, a couple weekends ago, I was uh, out um, in one of the local grocery stores. And, uh, you know, like I said, every now and then I see some of the, I guess the organization called the Hebrew Israelites. And they're out talking and, you know, I dialogue with them you know, every now and then. 
Um, but one of the things I found out that uh, I was completely taken aback by is uh, one of the guys that I talked to said to me, well, that's so-and-so's, and I'm not going to call their name, that's so-and-so's group. I'm like, oh, what do you mean so-and-so's group? I'm not, you guys, do you guys don't believe the same thing? Or I thought that oh, you guys were teaching the same things. He said, no. There, there are, like, I know that there are two main groups that are separated in terms of their ideology. Um, but at, I was unaware of this. So he broke it down to me and told me that. And so I immediately thought about the same thing that has happened to our people, where you have people with, under the same umbrella of Christendom uh, or Catholicism have all of these different sects and denominations where they can't even agree on the central um, theologies that they claim to live by. Um, here again is, is another serious uh, spiritual dilemma our people find them in. I, I can remember there was a time when, if you even went to another church, people who called themselves Christians did not talk to you simply because you went to another building. But yet they were being taught that the church is not that the church or what they're referring to an individual is really the church so apart from the separate building but yet in reality your behavior and actions taught something totally different now let's kind of move away from uh, from the uh the spiritual and religious aspect of this into the social economic um, and the so social psychological ramifications ramifications of what we are discussing today. What are what are the social ramifications of this? What we discuss today. The social ramifications is that we still have to take our son and fit it underneath a lunar system, a system that's based on attraction, uh, mag magnetism, uh, attention, um, attention seeking, that's based on the destruction of positive energy all these things we have to take socially and elevate that above who we actually are as sun people. This is a real dilemma for us. And, 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 and the reason for that is what I explained to you earlier in terms of your etheric heart. Because your etheric heart is not the real heart that you are manifesting, okay? Your real etheric heart has been blocked, okay? And there are a lot of ways in which they have done this, okay? But again, primarily through religion, but also through education. Because you're taught from a societal perspective that all you ever was were slaves. That whenever you open a history book or whenever any discussions about you come up, it's surrounding this one little <laughs> patch or a little dot in an ocean of water of the accomplishments of black people. And this in itself okay keeps you in a dilemma because now black people are waking up to the fact of our genetic memory bank who we really are what we have produced what we have invented how the economic power for this country 
all of this is coming out of, uh, out of the bag now. You're back, back, brother Lance. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it automatically switched over. Um, but maybe um, now, since all of these uh, manifestations of, 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 of true history are now coming out, it's like when you have, uh, say you, you have a, a, a hose that has several holes in it, and you're trying to pet, every time you patch up one hole, another hole gushes up the air from it. So while these people are trying to patch up all of these holes, okay, they can't keep up. So what do they do? They penalize you to let you know that we still have control over your son. And no matter how bright your son is, we have the ability to dis distinguish it. But we know from the quasar that you really don't have the ability to do that unless we give this ability over to you, which we have. And not only that, we are giving this ability over to our, we are giving them the, abil the same ability to have over our children. And I believe it was Malcolm that said, only a fool would allow their oppressors or their enemies to teach their children. You know, you can look at the enemy any kind of way you want, okay? And I know that we attach this hate spirit with the word enemy. And in a lot of ways, it, it does apply. But there is a portion of what is considered an enemy that has more to do with <clears throat> how the narratives about you are shaped, okay? And so this is done through what you give your energy to. And, and we know that black people give, this is how, why they're so effective with their algorithms and their bots towards us. It's because uh, the centuries of studying our people, they know certain things that we um, will continue to do because we crave that attention from them. You know, we, um, we crave the fact that we want to be known as somebody of importance. And what person doesn't want to feel important? But you see, it's, it's what the image of importance that has been set before you, that's the problem. And here again is where we have this, this, where you're offered or told one thing in a script, but yet the spirit of it is something totally different. Okay. Where the greatest person is a servant. But yet we see, this is why I made the statement earlier that God must be a bigot. The God that we know about. Okay, has to be because that is the manifestation of what religion has brought to our people. Okay, and I even listened to a, a little gospel music. You can hear this in our people, you can hear this etheric realm, this spiritual realm that moves beyond. Okay the religious uh, doctrines that have been um, infiltrated in, in our spirit. But there is a, and I'm not going to even say it, but there is a connection that you have not been able to break that you can even hear in our gospel music that is still the primary source of you not being able to break beyond this physical trap that you're in. Okay, and there is a primary name that you are attached to 
that is the biggest single reason why our people have still have blinders on. Okay. So one of, one of the things that we have to do, and, and this is the social dilemma that I'm talking about as well, is that what is going to happen is this is the other part of the bringing in the legal um, invasion of, of the United States. And this was part of the plan is that now these people are just as, if not as religious as black people. So now you're going to see the old playbook being brought out where these crosses are going to be worn around their necks. They're going to be regurgitating. I hear them on the corners here. The same thing that black folks used to do when they used to put up uh, my dad and them tents or what they call revivals around the country and then build churches. They're going to do the same thing and they're going to get rewarded. And see, this is what black folks are afraid of because you have put all your eggs in that basket. But now you're not just being replaced socially, um, you're being replaced religiously. Because what they're saying is, okay, not only do we have a labor force, an economic force that'll work for $5 an hour, <coughs> where you want $25 an hour, <clears throat> but we also have someone that has a if not the same, greater, the same religious fervor that we have taught them, that we taught you. And so now we can kill two birds with one stone. You can continue to go in the buildings and get, I guarantee you, if black folks all over this country stop paying tithes for one Sunday, you'll see something different. You, you'll see in fact, I'm calling for a boycott of tithes of our people all over this country this coming Sunday. You will see a response, and you'll see the type of real power that you have that you have never seen before. Because contrary to what has been told to you, America is not a Christian nation, okay? Or, and when I say Christian, I'm talking about uh, the theology of Christianity, Okay? And you'll see when you stop giving that money what I'm talking about. Okay, you, two things is going to happen. The first thing that's going to happen is now all of a sudden, oh, they're going to recognize black folks. Oh, well, what is it that you want? When, uh, and, and I say this all the time to our, to our people. Martin Luther King was a great man. is a great man. But... If it wasn't for that Montgomery bus boycott, where they hurt them in their pocket and they shut down that city, they didn't give a damn about Martin Luther King could have preached five times a day. They didn't care nothing about that. Until that Montgomery bus boycott, where black folks stuck together and walked for a whole year. And see, these things show you that you're not powerless. You just refuse to do anything different. Now, it doesn't take that now. All it takes is for black folks to say, go on the internet like you all do when you're listening to that garbage, start a movement saying, no more ties this week. And then when you expand it to two weeks, you're really gonna see something, okay? And this is the social economic angle of religion that has stranglehold our people. I saw, I saw a video on YouTube where this guy was out hunting and he lost his dog. And he didn't hear the dog barking or nothing. So he went back to where he last saw the dog and this big ass seven foot kangaroo had the dog in a chokehold. Like choking the dog was almost like out of it. And the owner walked up to the kangaroo. The kangaroo let go the dog, and the owner threw a vicious left, left hook, boom, to the kangaroo. Now, most kangaroos, they're going to fight. But that punch was so hard, 
that that kangaroo got somewhere. So what's the moral of that story? These folks have had a 500 year stranglehold on your neck because it was our people that they first saw when they came here. I don't care what nobody tell you. And now when they see you coming and taking action, they're going to release that, that stranglehold around your neck. But that ain't the last thing. Once they release that, then you got to hit them with a punch and let them know. This is what, and that punch is, we're not paying any tithes this, this week. No black folks in any churches. And I guarantee you, you'll see something. You'll see, you'll see something that you, like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz said. Well, you had that. You could go home all the time. All you had to do is tap your heels three times. <laughs> this whole time, you've had all this power, but you refuse to use or even look at. Why? Because you continue to live by the narratives. You continue to deny the real creator, creatrix of the universe. Okay? And you continue to live by these narrated lies that you have been told that you swear by but the fruits and the manifest, I just read it to you, for our children, is something the devil would be proud of, or what you call the devil. Okay. So the time has come for us to, um, to really um, look at and examine, okay, where are we going? That time has come. Okay, and so um, the longer we wait to take action, like what I'm suggesting today, this massive boycott, okay, um, but even beyond that, don't even go to the building. How about that? Just do that for one Sunday. You have the banks responding. You have the government responding to you. You have corporations responding to you, okay? Because what they're going to do is, you already see that here in California. They're going to give people from coming from other countries the opportunity to own houses, okay? They're going to give them all the things. They're going to spit in your face, give them all the things that you have been denied unrighteously. This is... When you really think about this, this is the most asinine thing that any people that want to call themselves human can do to another people, what they do to have done to black folks and continue to do. But you continue to kumbaya, okay? Uh, no, no. So this is the beginning of it all. They're not just going to stop there. They're going to replace you in all your jobs. It's going to be a snowball effect. This is going to be the social economic impact. And then what you're going to do is you're going to continue to say, uh, well, we need to pray more. <laughs> okay. Or we need to uh, ask Jesus to do more, intervene. I don't know what more he could do. Because surely you've been crying. We've been crying for hundreds of years. I don't know what else can be done. I don't even know why you continue to even use the term praying. When clearly, whatever you're doing, it almost seems like it's working against you. And so, based on the narratives that you're taught, why would you even have to pray to God for something that they know that you need? If, you, if you're praying to the one that created you. That doesn't even make sense. This is one of the things, too, with our people. Just think, some of this stuff is crazy. Okay, now just because you quote something doesn't make it so.
Because when you find out the origins of it, you probably don't ever want to quote it again. That's the real truth. And, you know, I'm not going to spend any more time on this subject. Um, I'm, I'm going to move beyond this moving forward. But I just had to talk about this today because unbeknownst to me, I didn't know that our people, I, I knew, but then when I started looking at the um, stuff on YouTube with our people pushing, and again, a lot of this comes with now our people are trying to align themselves with these people that uh, pretend to be religious. Okay, you don't have to do that. You don't have to align yourself uh, with religious fanatics at all, okay? Align yourself with the truth, okay? You can still uh, come out of a situation without having to accept all everything that goes with that. Our people have to get out of that, okay? Yeah, I can accept some things that you're doing, but I'm gonna reject the other things. Like, if you're spewing heat, hate towards me, if you're exciting hate groups towards me, then I'm going to speak out against this. Okay, I don't care how religious you say you are. Okay. And just because you walk around with a cross, that doesn't mean anything. If you really know what that symbol means. So, um, we're at a crossroads here. 2024 is a powerful, powerful year. Um, and, and this is why this tremendous attack is now being. Because, see, what you don't see is that your position as a primordial seed has never changed. Nothing is going to change that. So the, your natural enemies and oppressors, this never changes for them. So... And I hear black people saying this all the time. Why do they hate us so much? Why do these other people that come to America hate us so much? You just have no idea. You have no idea who you are and why these counterfeit spirits are using this hate with these people against you. That's never going to change. That's never going to change. I don't care how much you want this to be for people to love you. I'm almost at the point of saying that, that, that it's impossible for them to do that. Knowing all the dynamics I know now. But I'm really concerned about our people now. I really am. Um, now, let's move from the social aspect or manifestations of fruits of this and the socioeconomic fruits of this to the psychological aspect of this. One of the things that this has created, well, not just with our youth, but there are a lot of angry uh, black people, adults, very angry. The men are angry at the women. The women are angry at the men. The women are angry at each other. And the brothers are angry at each other. Why? Angry at what? For what? We need to be trying to be... Every time you see another black person, you need to at least find out if they're thinking the way you're thinking, rather than to automatically assume that they're somebody that's your enemy. Now, I agree, just because they're black doesn't mean that, you know, they care about the causes that we are trying to advance. I mean, that's obvious, we know that. But uh, what I am saying is, is that your energy will attract the people you need in your life to accomplish certain things. Okay, but if you shut down people, okay, based on false narratives, whether it's religion or whatever it is, it creates this psychological uh, uh, dimension that our people are struggling through now. Our young kids have this anger, okay, that has nothing to do with their etheric heart because, again, uh, we have blocked their etheric heart through passing down these religions to them. We have done this. We have blocked their etheric uh, spirit and we have blocked their etheric uh, hearts. Um, 
when you say that a mind is a terrible thing to waste, I say a heart is a terrible thing to waste. Because now, you know, I remember something my daddy used to say. I, I never understood this. He didn't talk to me very much. But what he did, and I asked him certain things, he said that real men make decisions based on their heart. I never understood that until, you know, I became a certain age. And I agree. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be a sucker for everything. That doesn't mean, that is not what it means. Okay? What it means is that your etheric heart should lead you, and your etheric heart is connected to your etheric spirit and body and the etheric realm. Okay? So, if you're in tune to who you really are, then, you know, those, those things automatically come into your spirit, automatically through your etheric heart. Um, they, they've done a real number on our brothers. Um, I, I talked to, you know, a lot of black men that are very angry. Um, one of the reasons they're angry is what they have to do to try to keep up with this fiat-driven artificial world in order for our women to recognize them. Um, and this is a real source, as a black man, I'm saying this, this is a real source of frustration for a lot of our brothers. Now, I know that goes both ways, okay? I know this goes both ways. I'm not a black woman, I'm a black man, even though you know, I know I have black women friends. Okay, but the point I'm trying to make is it's gonna take an effort from both sides to come back and bring some kind of equilibrium of understanding, some kind of balance. Because now, the one thing you don't know is no matter what they're telling you about these people on the media, is they got love for each other. Yeah, they, they have gangs and fight against each other and do all these other things too. But the men and the women, they're gonna build together. I know this firsthand, okay? not from what I heard from somebody. So, um, I don't know, man, our, our, our people are so caught up into all these different things with Hollywood and all this other stuff I'm hearing where, you know, we, every time we get to a point where we seem like, okay, now we're able to focus on the things that we need to focus on and put the energy to that, there are some other distractions that come along. Okay, and it's not just a small distraction, it's a huge distraction, okay? And, and what happens is when we get sidetracked, then, you know, it's like we forget about what we're up against. We forget about the fact that we, don't, we have no friends, okay? I don't care how much people smile in your face tell you things or pretend to like you, the reality is if you're in this skin right here, okay, then there is a natural hatred towards you because you are a child of the sun. There's a natural hatred towards you. I don't care who won't like what I'm saying, this is true. And, and, and not only is this true, it has been borne out and manifested and it continues to be manifested. And if anybody want to prove it wrong, show something different. Uh, why black folks have to beg you for no doggone reparations? That is insane. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. But yet, you can go to a church and preach to our people and then walk out and deny them the very things that they're supposed to um, get from what they have produced, not from what you have produced, what they have toiled and produced. Not only that, but what they have produced for you and continue to produce. So your behavior shows me not only how you feel about my people, but also what you're trying to do to continue to destroy us. This is clear. Stephen Wonder and Ray Charles can see this. 
So let's stop with this, you know, smiling in our face. You know, we got these black folks who so-called celebrities on TV that you're, you know, pushing up in the limelight for what? What is that going to do for the, the millions of our people that still struggle every day for their human dignity, for their human rights, not civil rights, because we have human rights that's above that. And that, that is because we were, we not, were not created by man, okay? So the number one thing that has to happen is black people have got to stop trying to kumbaya with these people and start telling them this is what the real deal is, okay? This is what you have shown to us. This is what you continue to show to us. What's the deal? What's the deal? And then in the same fake world, these fake people, you get somebody like Ice Cube who stands up for black folks that's dealing with real ish, okay, and, and, and dealing directly uh, with these counterfeit spirits that are trying to destroy our people. Look how, Look what happens. And then you get our same people attacking him and other people like him. This is nonsense, man. Our people have got, and this is only because you want to get the crumbs, okay, the little crumbs that's being given to you. It's not even worth, it ain't worth nothing, okay? It's not worth shit. But yet our black folks will, will, will kill each other defame each other, okay, do all these things to each other just so they can be recognized by these puppet masters, okay, that have you bent over backwards, literally. So, well, what is, uh, what is it going to take for black people to stop accepting this smiling in our face? What is it going to take? And what is it going to take for you to stop trying to penalize people like Brother Lance and myself and other people in the chat room and our family? Uh, what is it going to take for black folks to stop penalizing each other? I know what it is. You're afraid to confront the real boogeyman. But you will tear down one of your own people, okay, just because you're afraid to deal with the real, the, the real source of this anguish that you have. You are. And not only that, uh, these people not only have, have caused you to worship false gods and then give them money, give money to the pimps who turn around and give it back to these people <laughs> that hate you, uh, you continue to do this. So we can no longer blame white people. We cannot, these are people within our own community that's doing this. We know the systems that they have built and they continue to perpetuate to hold you down, but that's not what's holding you down. That's yeah, not. It's this inappropriate behavior and your refusal to, to come outside of a cocoon and, and look at real nature. So I think I pretty much said about as much as uh, I'm going to say today, you know, and uh, one of, the, one of the, the things that I want to leave you guys with is that uh, we have to be able to talk to each other like this, okay? Um, and it, if we're not able to talk to each other like this, we're never going to be able to reach the 963 hertz God frequency, okay, of healing and true spirituality that I know we can reach if, if we can only come out of this fog and out of this cocoon 
okay, and, and, and reach the heights that I know we can. And so with that, I'm going to end. I don't know if Brother Lance is here. I haven't heard him, but uh, peace to all the family. And you guys continue to be strong, continue to fight with your etheric heart and spirit, which you know to be the truth. Of course, you're going to take some hits, you know, as part of life. And particularly, you're going to take some hits because of who you are and, and the time of manifestation. The spring equinox is getting ready to manifest. It has already manifested, but it's going to manifest from the etheric world into the physical realm. So peace. And love to all, and I hope to be able to talk with you again next week. Yes, brother, I'm here. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, yeah, no, as soon as I had moved my hand on the phone, the <laughs> phone fell out of my hand and knocked me out off of the show. Oh, so wow. now I heard you on the way out. I said, let me get back before you leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so here I am. Yeah, no, I listened to the whole thing, just as it would have it, you know, no, but I couldn't fall asleep on that. I was wide awake for the whole thing, and it's brilliantly done once again, and again, I'm still in a power outage, but up here in the mountains, it is pitch black, pitch black, and it's a beautiful thing. I'm on the top floor, and the breeze is moving nice, and I probably will go off after this, not because I'm tired, but I'm just... This yeah. thing is an intoxicant, and the oxygen is fabulous. Yeah. But we'll be back tomorrow with some more shows, and this okay. one here with something to chew on. I'm not hungry now. I'm eating off of the food that you fed us. But tomorrow we'll do something, and we look forward to next week. And it's just a beautiful thing, brother, and I thank you. I thank you so much. I'm going to go back and play this over as I lay here and see what happens naturally. So I, I really appreciate what you've done tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother Lance. Keep up the great work, and uh, we'll talk. We'll talk this week. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we got to, man. You hit me up when you can. Okay, I will. Just hit me up quickly. Oh, and understand, I'm off of the messenger app. It's been messing me up. I took it off, put it on. It just didn't work. I don't know what's going on. So yeah. you know, the email, direct phone number, anything. Okay. We're good. That goes to everybody too, because um, they're really coming down and, and trying to snuff, but they can't snuff me. They ain't gonna do it. All yeah. the way, you know, if they will try to get in your way, you know. They can't, but thank they can't you, brother. Up, are. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. There exactly. Is, brother, you are a bright shining object out here. They, uh, no matter what they do, they can't snuff it out. Well, you know, it, it's. I'm not going to argue with you <laughs> because they're not going to stop the fire burning. You know what I mean? I'm not going to argue with that. You know what I mean? I have nothing but time to strategize to make things happen to get here and get there. Just know that all of the content is on soundcloud.com. Okay. And search one here there. Everything is there. I just have to fill in a couple of months for the last few months where I shut SoundCloud down. Um, I, I, I will explain everything, but it is just so interesting. Um, rules were broken, attacks were made, and um, it, it's funny. It's really funny, but we're still here. We have all our content. At least all the audio is there. And um, if they want to mess around and get a lawsuit, they're going to get it. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to play that game, right? So <laughs> yeah. I've done nothing. But, again, when you don't put the buffoonery out there, you know how to speak to your people and reach them effectively in many different ways. They don't like that, especially now. But, um, like I said, they're, they're not stopping anything. Yeah, I got all the time in the world to do what I do. Yes. All right, Brother Lance. Well, you take care. Yes, thank you. I'll talk to you again soon, brother. Okay, brother. Peace thank and you love. so much. Peace awesome. and love always, brother. All right, All right. bye bye. Okay, peace. Mm -hmm.
Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting-edge cartoons, as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Once you get a taste of the world of Lance Curve, trust me, you'll be back for more. LanceGurve.com Bold, raw, and uncut.